All right, today we have uh, some big block forward and FE forward roller lifter issues that I want to go over and make you aware of. Hang loose and we'll get into it. All right, so we got a hydraulic roller. Uh, I believe this is a crane for a FE forward. Um, everything's fine with the cam. There's no issues. But what the issue is, the customer called me and wanted to know if we could grind the lobe to a smaller base circle because his, uh, I don't know what they call, $700 set of Johnson lifters is puking oil out of the top of the, of the lifter bore at max lift. So <clears throat> luckily he had a set of Morales and a set of Johnson's and I have a set of Gatorman's on the shelf so we can measure the location of the oil band in all of these lifters and kind of figure out what's going on and where we need to be to make this work. But apparently, just from what I can see, the only lifter with a problem is the most expensive one, which is a Johnson. And it's got the biggest problem out of all of the lifters that we've looked at. So I've got everything on the surface plate. I've got our digital height gauge. And we've got our uh, pointer, our finger on the height gauge. And so we're going to look at the, the, the top height of the oil band on all of these lifters. And then we can look at the, the depth also because there's some, some definite differences between brands on, on the bottom of the uh, oil band also. And I thought it was, was really um, interest, interesting how, how, how much different this stuff is. So let's start, let me lay these down. Let's start with the, the problem child. So come on over here close, Andrew. Let me turn these. And you can see, you know, those are brand hammer new, Johnson, USA made, big money lifters. All right, so if we come in and we bring I'd say right there. So right there is the top, and we're gonna call that, we're gonna call that zero at the top. All right, so let's get to my rails, and we're gonna do the same thing, wheels touching the table on all of them. Now you can see how much lower that morel groove is, so I'm gonna bring it in. Try to right there. That's a hundred and fourteen thousandths. So the morel is a hundred and fourteen thousandths lower than the Johnson, and then I'm almost positive because I just eyeballed them, but I'm almost positive the Gatorman is the same as the morel as far as that dimension. Now there are some things that are different. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Gatorman has a bigger chamfer in that corner, but ultimately, I mean, there's, there's about 15, 20 thousandths difference in the Gatorman and the Morale. Now one thing that you'll notice let me grab my calipers. All right, so roughly 470, yeah, 475. So we're going to call the groove width on the Gatorman's 475 thousandths. And I mean, you can just see how much wider it is on the Morel. So the Morel is 590, that's 15 millimeter in it, 590. And then I think 
we're going to see these are the shortest out of all of them. And it's also the shallowest diameter. We'll, we'll check that too. Yeah, so it's like 510, 514-ish, about 514. All right, so the diameter is... 828, 828, remember that, and then that's uh, 8790, 790 on the Gatormans, and then 816-ish on the Morales. Now, another thing that creates even more problems, if you look at the oil inlet is below the the groove on the Gatorman and on the Morel, you can see it doesn't break out into the groove on either one. But on the Johnsons, and, and I think, and again, it's, it's all a problem, but this is making the problem even worse. So it's adding another hundred thousandths, ultimately, it's adding another hundred thousandths to the groove height because the inlet is so far up. So how in the world they come up with that dimension, I, I don't know the answer to. But so you can, you can basically say, so this was 114 plus another 100 for this issue. So that's 214 thousandths. So to make, to make this lifter work in... Th with this camshaft, you would have to reduce the base circle diameter of this camshaft by 428 thousandths to make this lifter end up with the top in the same place as this lifter or this lifter. So, and we know that, I mean, you, you just can't, and I mean, this is not the, the super accurate way, but, but it'll give us a close idea. Yep, so we won in four, just call it one four seventy. So, I mean, it's just impossible. And so how in the world they sell a lifter, and I mean, I ain't confirmed a part number, but this is supposed to be, I'm just looking to see if there's even a part number on it. I don't see a part number at all. Yeah, I don't see any kind of part number. I see their logo, but I can't read a part number. Dang, that's crazy. Um, but it, 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 it's possible that it's the wrong part number, but is my understanding with the tie bar widths, a big block forward and an FE forward, everybody's, that's, that's how it works. And no other lifter has the bar spacing to work. So... And they then, you know, structurally, they look like everybody else's. It's just the oil bands in the wrong place. So just be aware of that. Um, I know while we're talking about lifter problems and base circle, <clears throat> I had this uh, conversation the other day with a customer about small block forwards and retrofit lifters, like retrofit as in this style lifter in an early block that was a non-roller going to a roller cam and he, he was sure that he needed a small base circle. Uh, I, I believe it's like one in three, one in 310 or one in 380. I don't remember what, whatever the small base circle for a forward is. But with, and I cannot speak for other manufacturers lifters, I don't know the answer. But for a Gatorman lifter, you do not need a small base circle cam and a small block forward with a Gatorman retrofit lifter or um, a standard drop-in lifter either. Uh, if you, it, it, we took some and put them side by side with the retro and the standard drop-in and the oil band and all that stuff is in the exact same place. So just be aware of that, that you, 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 I mean, you could get in trouble with a small base circle because it actually may go too deep in the block and then uncover the, you have the same problem as this guy's having, but on the bottom side of the block. 
So keep keep that in mind. But again, uh, and the, the you know here, here's here's another episode. So it doesn't matter what you do to this cam unless you just make the lobe extremely small, regardless of the lift, regardless of anything. Because you know we've talked about it multiple times. The peak of the lobe is irrelevant to lift and any of that other jazz in the grand scheme of things because the top of the lobe, we figure the base circle by the journal diameter and the lift. So I don't it, whether it was 400 lift or 700 lift, the top of that lobe is going to end up in the same place. And the problem with this lifter is at peak lift. So it doesn't matter the lift of the cam or the, the base circle as long as it was figured correctly because, you know, if you come over here and look, you know, we can lay a straight edge across and you can see that the top of the lobe is just under the journal diameter, which is exactly where it should be. And if we did the math when we were setting up to grind this cam, again, whether it was 400 lift at the valve or 800 lift at the valve, the top of that lobe is gonna be in the exact same place. So he's still gonna have the exact same problem regardless. So we would have to, you know, condense the heel to toe dimension and shrink that lobe way down to ever make this work. But again, it, the problem is so bad that it's physically impossible. I mean, it, this, this deal is gonna take one of these other sets of lifters to make this work period because i don't know anybody that's got a core that's going to be available to grind a lobe that small and still have any heat treat i mean it just doesn't exist so anyway i thought that would be you know interesting educational because a lot of people you know they put this stuff together stick an intake on it and never look at it and then they end up with valve train problems down the road and they just didn't know that it was bleeding to death, you know, and definitely that's gonna cause oil not getting to the lifter and the rest of the valve train 50% of the time, you know, N not on a FE, but on a, cause the FE oils through the cylinder head to the rockers and all that, but you still only gonna have oil to the hydraulic unit half of the time and in a big block forward, it oils through the lifter all the time. It's not like a FE. So keep that in mind. Hope it helps. Uh, if you need Gatorman lifters, we're getting some in every 30 days or so. We try to keep the inventory updated as, as much as possible, but uh, you can get on a waiting list if you need something. Give us a call. Check out the website. Thanks so much. We'll see you on the next one.